So Israel Adesanya still hasn't gotten over the fact that the fans in Australia, when he went out there to fight Sean Strickland, booed him and showed love and support to Sean Strickland. He cannot get over it, and he was coping with it on his most recent interview with Ariel Helwani. The two stooges themselves got together, and Adesanya, let's get back to this. He said, listen, those Australian fans, of course they booed against me. It's because of my complexion. We shocked at the reception for him in Australia. Nah, they're racist. Which I find really funny because there's like a million reasons to not necessarily root for Adesanya in every single fight. And there are, you know, some good reasons to believe that Sean Strickland's a fan favorite. And it's just hilarious that this is what he thinks. So we're going to go into this and analyze this footage. Ah, it was something Dave Chappelle said on this fucking special. The, the closer, I think, I can't remember. But I'm um, pretty much, you have to be just, you have to know when it's your moment. And you have to also be humble enough to know when it's someone else's moment. And that was his moment. The fight week, everything was just like lined up for him. And that was his moment. We shocked at the reception for him in Australia. Nah, they're racist. Yeah. That's what you felt it was? Yeah, no, just also, I think it's just me and them and... Sure, sure, for sure, yeah. It's not that, you know, you've been the most annoying champion, the most favorited champion, all right, that's been given opportunity after opportunity. You've been given the nod after robbery after robbery after robbery. <laughs> you know, you've been, you've been dancing and dancing and dancing. You know, I've actually done some dancing as well, the muzzing stuff. But either way, Izzy's been dancing. He's been, you know, doing the anime lines. He's been doing shit with the dogs. Remember, that's a big part about why there was a whole lot of hype surrounding Adesanya that fight week. Because, of course, you know, there was this dog talk. MMA Guru was going viral talking about Izzy and the dogs. And, you know, he was looking like a bit of a creep at the time. And, of course, Sean Strickland's just a fan favorite because of how genuine he is. Because of how real and raw the guy is. And he's funny. And he just says what's on his mind. And he says things that most people are afraid to say but really want to say anyway these days. But are afraid that they'll get, like, canceled for saying that shit. But Strickland could do it. Right? That's why people love Sean Strickland. Uh, they were not cheering for Sean Strickland simply and cheering against you simply because of, you know, the complexion of Sean Strickland's skin and your skin. That's such bullshit. I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't my week. It wasn't, it was just him. And he's, uh, he knows how to pander. He's a great wow. politician. Put it that way. He's a great politician. But, um, oh, great politician. How is Sean Strickland? Like, I understand he's a good speaker and all this stuff, but. He did not have con he did not have um, support from the Australian fan base because he was a politician. He had support from the Australia fan base because they think that you are an embarrassment. He knows how to pander. He's a great politician. He knows how to pander. Interesting. So Sean Strickland only got the support of the fans because he knows how to pander. So according to Izzy, the Australian fan base roots against him because of the complexion of his skin. And Strickland, according to Izzy, he knows how to pander. So apparently Strickland just knew this and he was like, let me pander to the Aussies. Let me pander to the Aussies. That's not true at all, bro. Sean Strickland, just Sean Strickland everywhere he goes. And you happen to be the easiest target for him to trash talk because you're the cringiest fighter in the UFC. And you got a little twinkie old toe style, all right, where you're sitting at range and you're pit pointing around, pit papping around, pit papping around for points. And we don't always like it. And you're knocking out our favorite fighters sometimes. Credit to Adesanya. He's able to go out there and get a couple of KOs every now and then. But it's just that it's, you know, we're always rooting for Izzy's opponents. At least a lot of us. Because they're so much more likable. Robert Whitaker, pretty even-killed guy. Why are we rooting for him against Izzy? Because he's just ten times more likable. Which kind of means that he's just not that likable. Essentially, Sean Strickland is just likable. And Adesanya is less likable. All right, it's the personality for the most part. The style plays into it too, but a lot of it's the personality. But Izzy is just saying, oh, poor old me, you know, they, they don't like me just because of the way I look, which is just cope. Politician, mm. put it that way. He's a great politician. But um, yeah, it was just his week, his moment to shine. And what a ring, I mean, <laughs> amazing, amazing what he's done, great. So is he saying, you know, listen, everything, it is what it is. What a reign. Sean Strickland's title reign. Let's give him a round of applause for that amazing title reign. Like, listen, 
Let's talk about Sean Strickland's title reign. First of all, he beat you to win the belt, which is a pretty good win. Is he saying that's impressive? He beat me. Um, but the second thing that we have to be honest about is let's look at Adesanya's title reign. Okay? Because as far as I'm concerned, he's a win one, lose one type of guy these days. And you may laugh at that and you may say, oh, Lucas just doesn't like Adesanya. But at the end of the day, let's just talk about it like this. Okay, let's think about it. So he beats Robert Whitaker. He loses to Yoel Romero in a robbery. I count robberies. Just because the judges uh, are professional judges does not mean they always get it right, right? If they always got it right, then how come judges get different scorecards sometimes? How come there's a 49-46 for this guy, but a 48-47 for that guy? Judges don't always get it right, okay? Robbery against Yoel Romero, one over Paulo Costa, okay? Lost to Jan Blahovic. Stay with me. Comes back, fights Marvin Mediocre Vittori, puts us to sleep, and wins. And then he loses to Robert Whitaker in the rematch, as we're saying we're counting robberies. Then he fights Jared Cannonier, and he wins, but he happens to put us to sleep. Then he goes out there and loses to Alex Pereira. He goes out there and beats Alex Pereira. He gets that one back. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And just like as usual, he goes out there against Sean Strickland, and he loses. So talk about title reign. The Izzy fanboys would have you believe that this man was just on top of the world. All right? That he's just in a montage, an anime montage, just on top of the world, bending and, and twisting the, all the freaking elements of the world. <laughs> he's losing to Yoel Romero. He's losing to Robert Whitaker. He's losing to Jan Blahovic. So do not for a second think that this man had some type of Anderson Silva title reign. Now is his reign something? I mean, let's be honest. Let's actually be honest really quickly, though. If the judges got these scorecards right, would he have even had a title reign? He would have won against Whitaker. He would have lost to EOL. And we could have said, what a reign. Right? And then, let's just say, let's just say we take out those fights. Let's say he wins against Paulo Costa. He loses to Jan Blahovic. What a reign. Okay, so he wins against Marvin Mediocre Vittori. And he loses to Robert Whitaker. What a reign. He wins against Jared Kennanier. He loses to Alex Pereira. What a reign. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> now, yes, some of these, the judges gave him the tip of the hat. Okay? But in my opinion, I don't think he won those fights. There's a couple of robberies in there. I love it. I appreciate the, the sarcasm, I think. No, nah, I'm being serious. Come what on. reign? What are he you talking beat about? Israel Adesanya. Yes, yes. Fuck all that. He beat me. That's, That's true. bigger than anything. Well, it was shocking Fuck to watch. Fuck the belt. It's like, it's like when Bisping beat Silva. Right. Like, that was huge, him being champion and stuff. But being Silva was fucking like, his moment. What a reign, though. Dude. Can I ask all right, you know what? That's just bullshit. Like, there's this idea that, you know, screw the belt. The fact that Strickland beat me, that was really the impressive thing to the fans. And yes, Strickland beating Adesanya, take away the belt. It's impressive. The thing that made Sean Strickland's win against Izzy so great or so impressive was the fact that it was for the fucking title. And no one ever thought Sean Strickland would be a UFC champion. It was a meme to think of Sean Strickland as a future UFC champ, right? It was for the title and that's why it was special. For sure, the fact that Adesanya was in there made it a little bit better. But this idea that Bisbing's big win was over Silva, and the title was just a little cherry on top. No, no, not at all. Bisbing's biggest win throughout his entire career, his most famous, memorable win, is him knocking out Luke Rockhold with the left hook on short notice to win the title for his big Cinderella story, all right? Strickland's Cinderella story was winning the fucking belt. Yes, the fact that you were the champion definitely made it a little bit better, a little bit sweeter. For starters, it was unexpected, the UFC didn't get what they wanted, and the fans sometimes just take joy when the UFC doesn't have their golden egg, cash cow, clout cow win, all right? And, you know, Sean Strickland was a, a fan favorite at the time. But either way, I, I think that if anyone else that's had a win one, lose one type of title reign is going to have a, you know, you know going to be a good, nice uh, win for Sean Strickland. But listen, that's bullshit. Strickland winning the belt was the big thing. And you know what? This idea of making fun of his title reign, Strickland arguably beat Drinkus Duplessis. And you really want to go out of guy's title reign because he just lost? I could think of at least three or four fights that Adesanya has lost where he's been given the tip of the cap. All right? So Izzy's no stranger, guys, 
to losing close fights. It's happened many times. It's just that he's usually on the right side of it because the UFC loves him. But the main thing that I kind of wanted to talk about in this video was this idea that, you know, again, calling the, the Sean Strickland a politician, saying that the Australia fans were only rooting against him because he of his skin complexion, of his skin color. Like, are you kidding me? That's not true at all. People are rooting against you because they didn't like the buildup where you were shitting on Robert Whitaker in the buildup to their first fight. Remember Izzy was like trash talking Robert Whitaker and Whitaker was like the nicest guy and Whitaker tried to go back with him back and forth, just have a little bit of banter, posted a meme about Izzy and Izzy started getting all up in arms saying, this guy's out of character. Yeah, I can already tell he's crumbling. He's insecure and all this stuff. Like I just didn't understand it. Saying that Whitaker's a fake Maori and all this bullshit. So that is one reason why. The other reason is just look at his second fight with Yoel Romero. Happens to be the most boring fight in UFC history, and he blames it all on Yoel. When last time I checked, Izzy was the one running around the cage like a chicken without its head. Had the most boring fight in UFC history. So yeah, MMA fans aren't going to love that. Then he fights Paulo Costa, and he shows up with a fucking boob. Okay? So right off the bat, the alarm sounds, and we're thinking, holy shit, this guy's on tons of sauce. Like, how is he just getting in the cage? All right. And then he humps Paulo Costa after knocking him out, which, again, just doesn't sit well with a lot of MMA fans. And then he gets on the mic and he has this really cringy speech. Again, like the anime liners and the frozen like Elsa and people just don't love that. People don't love that, man. Izzy has a very unique, peculiar personality and people just don't like it. Okay, and they also don't love his style, and they also don't love his fanboys that glaze him and act like he's the best striker in the UFC. That's another thing. That's like one of the big reasons why I tend to kind of root against him sometimes, and I kind of root for his opponent sometimes because there's this idea of him being like, you know, the best striker in MMA, which is just not even fucking close to being true. Not even close to being true. Okay, but there's this idea. There's this like, you know, put him up there with the big boys like Wonderboy Thompson, all this stuff. And you just can't. But his fans, Joe Rogan, Dana White, Dana White's a promoter. It's his job. I 100% understand it. But they'll say things like he's the best striker. Michael Bisbing, just glazing this guy in title fights. Obvious favoritism from the UFC brass. Giving, you know, getting a, a million chances to redeem himself after a win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one career. Getting the, the, you know, the, the wrong side of a robbery where, you know, he's the winner, but the fans know who the real one was. <laughs> like, there are just so many things that make people justified in not necessarily being a big fan of the guy. All right? There's this dog situation. It's okay to not love a fighter in the UFC. And it's just natural when you see the UFC pushing him so hard. Like, guys like Rogan on the podcast glazing this man beyond belief. Talking about, whoa, style bender. He's just on a bit of a different frequency. Yeah, he's just, uh, oh my God. He's, he's just amazing. You know, like this stuff. <laughs> and it's like, yo, I saw Marvin Vittori go tooth the nail. <laughs> I saw Jared Cannonier at least take a couple rounds off of him. And we got guys like Volkanovski beating up Max Holloway for five rounds. And you got Joe Rogan talking about Izzy and how he's the best. You, you know, you got Wonderboy Thompson throwing tornado wheel kicks, landing them at will against the highest levels of competition, outstriking guys with ease, not having a close fight with the most mediocre strikers of his division. Okay. And, and you're, you got people saying Izzy. No, you just, you kind of just have to put Izzy in the mix. That's something that's always pissed me off. It's like, I always saw people just putting this dude in the top five strikers conversation. <laughs> And I never understood it. I was like, wait a second, but but like half of his performances are mediocre. And this is something that people don't really think about. Just think about it like this. Adesanya has never had an impressive decision victory that was decisive. He has never in his entire career had a decisive, impressive decision victory where he showcased a clear skill gap over his opponent. Outside of Brad Tavares way back in the day. Okay. Not a single one. Usually, the best strikers, as far as I'm concerned, the best strikers in the game can usually go out there and showcase quite a big gap over their opponents, even when they're also real good strikers. Perfect example, uh, Wonderboy Thompson schooling Jorge Masvidal for three rounds. 
schooling Vicente Luque for three rounds by a decision, not finishing them. Again, when Izzy gets a finish, it's great. When he doesn't finish people, it's not always been clear and decisive, right? The Jan Blahovic decision, the Marvin Vittori decision, it was decisive for sure, but it wasn't like absolute dominance, okay? Jared Cannonier, there was barely anything there. Robert Whitaker too, you get what I'm saying. So I can understand that when Izzy is fighting Sean Strickland in Australia, there are plenty of people that are not going to be gun ho about him, all right? Because again, last time I checked, like most MMA fans, they don't love Adesanya's personality, right? They don't even love his fight style all the time. Okay, so it's totally natural to hear some boos, especially when you got a guy like Sean Strickland, who's basically like an honorary Australian. I mean, he's kind of got a bit of an Australian spirit. He's a wild dude. And listen, Sean Strickland, he's an inspiration in some ways. All right, had a really rough upbringing, made a lot of uh, mistakes when he was growing up and, you know, kind of turned his life around big time and became a disciplined MMA fighter, now a champion, fan favorite, right? People got a, a lot of respect for him. He's funny, he's genuine, and he's able to say things that other people are too afraid to say. So that just garners him respect. And he's real, most importantly, he's real. So I could definitely see why Sean Strickland in Australia would get tons of pop, okay? And I think that if you were to have Izzy fight Sean Strickland in, let's say, New Zealand, for sure maybe it's a little bit different, but it's still very similar. Still very similar. But the point that I'm making is, it's not because of how you look. That's not why. That's not exactly it. All right? Anyway, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I, I think that Izzy is just totally wrong on this, and he's coping big time, and I thought I would talk about it. And I know that people don't love when I say things like, this guy's overrated and whatnot, and I understand it. He is a great fighter, but... Just because you won a bunch of titles and happen to be a UFC champion does not mean that you can't be rated higher than you should be, right? People have this idea that how can he be overrated? He was a champion in the UFC. Like I saw some guy in a comment section the other day say something along the lines of, you know, I kind of want Yuri to win, but if he doesn't, I guess he was kind of overrated, right? <sighs> and that's kind of true. But there was a response with like 300 likes that ratioed it that said, how could he ever be overrated? Dude was a UFC champion. Because he was rated higher than that. Because he was rated in a way that would make you think he beats Alexander Rakic and Alex Pereira maybe. All right? That's what it means. So again, if it were up to the Izzy fans, if you were to see the, the on paper version of Izzy that the Izzy fans have, the one that they jot down, that guy is undefeated you know, dominant decision after dominant decision, maybe a couple of KOs here and there, just putting whoopings on people, absolute whoopings. But not the real one. And here's the thing. Is he saying that it was Sean Strickland's moment? One, what, a, what a title reign. I think Sean Strickland beats him in a rematch. I think Sean Strickland's a bad matchup for him because what's is he going to do? Out grapple him? Can't do that. Sean Strickland is great takedown defense. Uh, probably an even better grappler than Izzy. He's going to have to stand with him. And Sean Strickland, as long as he could check those low kicks, he's the better boxer. And he, if he's the better boxer, he probably ends up winning. So it's going to be a rough one for Adesanya. Apparently, he's coming back to fight Drikas Duplessis. He's talking about how the layoff is going to be good for him. It's going to give him some rejuvenation. And I think that might be the case. But it's going to be a real difficult matchup to go in there against Drikas Duplessis. As sloppy as he gets sometimes. And he does leave himself open to getting hit. He's hungry. He just now won the belt. He hasn't struck it big yet. He hasn't made his bag, right? And I think that uh, it's going to be real tough to go in there against a big brute style like Drikas, who's just like powering forward like a bulldozer. And Adesanya is going to want to have a nice feel-out process. And remember, if Izzy doesn't get that early finish, it tends to get a little bit rough, okay? So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time.